Greetings, uh, we're coming to you from the Africa's Reach Square Mile in uh, Santon, Johannesburg. It is uh, the special broadcast of uh, Soweto today. Thank you for joining us. My name is Thabo Malukwane. We are in Santon Convention Center just outside for the 15th BRICS Summit, which is hosted here on the African soil. There's quite a lot of, uh, you know, topics that uh, uh, are on the cards uh, for this year's edition of uh, the BRICS Summit. We know that uh, Brazil, India, uh, Russia, South Africa, uh, you know, um, you know, there's quite a lot of issues that, uh, you know, they're going to touch on. I mean, top of the agenda is the issue of the expansion, uh, which, uh, you know, was actually uh, discussed previously with uh, quite a lot of uh, countries that are applying uh, to join in uh, the BRICS bloc. We saw also, uh, you know, an issue of the new BRICS currency, um, which is, uh, you know, one issue that will be discussed here. So as part of uh, discussions here on the show, we will be bringing you blow by blow coverage of what's happening inside the BRICS summit, uh, you know, for the rest of uh, the three days uh, right here on uh, Soweto TV channel 251. There's quite a lot of issues that... Uh, you know, will be on the cards. We saw uh, the statement that was released by South Africa's foreign minister, that's uh, Naledi Pando, uh, last week, saying that, uh, you know, the BRICS nations wanted to show global leadership, uh, you know, in addressing the needs of the majority of the world, um, you know, highlighting the issue of development and inclusion on the uh, global south and multilateral systems. As you know, that, uh, you know, there's quite um, a lot of issues that were discussed previously with a lot of nations saying that actually BRICS is just a waste of time but all the countries that are here and those that have been invited will definitely discuss some of those uh, pertinent uh, key issues. We will be bringing you blow by blow coverage right here at uh, the Santin uh, Convention Center. <laughs> We're coming to you from the Santon Convention Center just outside. As you can see behind me, there's quite a lot of media contingent as, uh, you know, uh, proceedings here at the 15th BRICS Summit uh, expected to kick off, uh, you know, in the next few hours. We saw um, the uh, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi just, uh, you know, coming with uh, quite a lot of contingent. Uh, that's uh, the staff there and uh, quite, you know, ministers, a lot of people coming in. We saw also the Brazilian uh, Prime Minister, I mean the Brazilian President also just uh, arriving earlier on uh, uh, here in uh, Johannesburg. There's quite a lot that's going to be discussed here, uh, as I said earlier on, uh, you know, on the agenda, the BRICS currency. But before we can get into that, uh, we know that there's going to be opening remarks from uh, the BRICS member states that, uh, you know, Brazil, uh, Russia, India, um, China, South Africa, they're going to be giving their opening remarks to uh, the people that are here, making sure that, uh, you know, um, they open them with uh, warm hands. Remember, this is the first seating physically here in uh, Johannesburg on African soil since uh, the start of the um, COVID-19 pandemic. Earlier on, uh, we did uh, touch base to quite a lot of people here in Santon uh, that are here and you know one of the people was saying that they have a present for President Cyril Ramaphosa. It's going to be interesting indeed. They did uh, you know speak to us here uh, on uh, just outside the convention center and let's take a listen to what they had to say. Um, I love the mood. Um, I myself as a business banker and for, for one of the members, founding members of YWBN Mutual Bank, which we founded around 2017 in Ikuruleni, I'm inspired by what I see in investments as a woman who's involved in agriculture and agri-biz, agro-processing, dealing with vegetation and fruit and meat processing. It's really interesting, the networking, the level of network and business uh, that I'm receiving from China and Brazil. I was very impressed and it's still going on until dinner time. I mean, a lot of people would, 
you know, talk about the importance of uh, just networking as a whole. How important is it and for emerging businesses also, how important is this kind of a summit to also emerging businesses for people like yourself who are very established? Uh, it also, you also seeking growth also. Mm. But, uh, you know, how important is just the issue of networking as a whole, particularly in a setting like this? Network is very vital and important, Putuam, because it, it assists you to develop and grow more in your business and to expand. Because as we speak, I'm going to be hosting these ladies from Brazil who are also in agriculture like myself, in food uh, uh, processing to Rwanda as they are hosts from South Africa, and they are so excited. And I was, on the other hand, as a board member of Ikurleni Tourism, I was sitting with the other Chinese people for a, a board meeting and everything was impressive. They were so impressed. They are going to invite us to China, to Gonzo, to, uh, uh, to promote our, our tourism business further from Ikurileni. Just lastly, before I let you go, where do you see businesses, South African business, particularly, you know, from, you know, taking this summit as uh, you know it comes with a lot of opportunities where do you see uh, are you expecting you know growth from the businesses in, in in the long run i see massive extensive extremely huge immersive growth growth and big developments from different kinds of people from different kinds of companies and i see a lot of people succeeding in south africa as long as we work hard and we strive for the best and we we do we ignore whatever uh, destructive factors in our economy and we just focus Focus on growing our businesses and local brands to other international uh, uh, countries and lands. It's going to be wonderful and splendid. We know the BRICS got held in Johannesburg, and as we stay here, oh, we really want to meet President Cyril Ramaphosa. Oh. <laughs> yeah, really so want our to. Our oh, okay. and we we prepare gift for him <laughs> oh, because in Korea we can just go out even in night, and we can just hold our cell phone in anywhere. Uh, that's the point. I think the safety problem is severe in Johannesburg also. So uh, one of our activity is uh, awareness the edu uh, for education. So I want to meet president and tell, tell him that we want to uh, cooperate with him for the education or awareness of safety, something like that. Those are some of the people that we spoke to. Um, remember that you are still watching the special coverage of uh, the 15th BRICS Summit. It is uh, Soweto today. You heard what, uh, you know, um, the students uh, that are based here in South Africa, they are actually from South Korea, talking about the issues of safety, saying that, uh, look, uh, they are hoping that the issue of safety is going to be of imperative. It's going to be discussed by uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa and his counterparts that are going to be here. And also, you know, um, they touched on the issue of, uh, you know, opportunities in the country. Um, also, you know, we spoke to one of the person from the Ekuruleni Tourism Board, just touching on the issue of business, the issue of um, partnership, saying that uh, emerging businesses need to be able to take stock of what's happening today in order to make sure that they grow in the future there. We're still going to be talking to quite a lot of people just to get a sense of uh, the mood here uh, at the 15th BRICS Summit uh, here at the Santin Convention Center. Thank you so much, Tabo. The mood has been rather interesting because, you know, there has been a lot of expectations from people, especially on the Vladimir Putin matter. You know, people were expecting that, you know, there might be a change of heart by the South African government and, you know, finally let him in. But we've seen that he is going to be attending the BRICS summit virtually. So with that being said, a lot of people have been really interested to see what will be the, the outcome and you know the agendas I know they're going to be speaking a lot on the currencies there is a really big you know focus on the currencies and the addition of new members the expansion of the BRICS um, summit and with those issues that are underlying in terms of the the coup that's been happening in Niger I think that is some of the issues that we are going to be dealing with in the BRICS summit but for me looking at you know the general society. What is interesting, it seems people have been really anticipating this summit because they see this as a turning point for our country because we are the only African country which is currently in BRICS. So that means as of yet we are the powerhouse of Africa.
So, Zuel, I want us to focus on uh, what's going to be happening today in terms of proceedings. I mean, we know that uh, the program is fully packed. You know, there's quite a lot of speakers. I know that uh, there's going to be opening remarks from the uh, BRICS block uh, members there. Uh, maybe just take us through the program. What is it that we can expect today? Man, in terms of the program, it is going to be directed by the Department of um, the Minister rather of Trade, Industry and Competition, uh, Minister Abraham Patel. He's going to be directing the whole program and what we can expect from today is just opening statements from all the five countries which is Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. We're just going to be hearing, I'm interested to hear the position that they're going to be taking in terms of you know this whole BRICS summit to to really give us a sense of where they are in terms of you know what are they their standings because we know that there are two outlying matters but in the opening statements I'm just waiting to see how they're going to position themselves in terms of um, you know everything that's been happening within Africa we know that the Russian president was supporting um, the the Niger coup so I'm I'm hoping that they will be tackling onto those things. I know that uh, they will be also putting pressure on Russia to sort of stop the war in Ukraine and you know a whole lot of other things but for now I just think the the opening statements will so the opening statements will give us a direction of what we can expect throughout this whole you know BRICS summit. Um, I, I mean, just lastly, before I let you go, I know that uh, you know there was bilateral relations. Uh, uh, Chinese President uh, Xi Jinping uh, visited the Union buildings this morning. Quite a lot of issues uh, came out of there. I heard, uh, you know, there were agreements that were expected to be signed. Uh, you know, particularly um, with us having a great relationship with China. Maybe just take us through exactly some of the key issues that were discussed there, and also what is it that we can be looking forward to in terms of moving forward? In terms of um, the president of China's visit to South Africa, it was really interesting because they touched on key important factors. They looked at tourism as a sector that might be needing more investing. I know that the president did say that a lot of products are being made in China and they are being sold in South Africa. So they are looking to make that partnership mutually beneficial as to you know take products from South Africa, giving them to the Chinese uh, market. That's also what they were looking at. But the biggest factor that you know came out of all the all those um, discussions was tourism. Tourism has been hit the most uh, since COVID, the pandemic, especially in terms of how South Africa is being preserved in China. So the president was saying that you know they might boost in, um, they might boost um, relations in terms of that aspect. They might take. I don't know, products that come ex exclusively from South Africa and, um, m you know, put them in the Chinese market. But I think basically what was the meeting for is just that to sort of deepen their collaborations because we know that since 1998, um, in 1998, we used to trade an amount of 1 billion, but now we are sitting at 641 billion. So that they were also analyzing the growth and looking at you know what has been the positives and the negatives of that agreement. And it is quite crucial to add that during this time, China has been very supportive of South Africa in terms of um, a lot of products, in terms of a lot of services. But this time, it is really key to see that um, if China will allow us to you know sort of be mutually benefiting from these agreements. So I think the, the interesting part that we can take out from there is just to look at how will South Africa benefit from China because we know um, it's, it's very it's very interesting to, 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 to see the aspects and see the, the change in, pers in perspectives from you know all around but what we can expect I think from now on especially from today on we can expect more deals we can expect more space uh, more funds I mean in the tourism sector in terms of South Africa going to China we can also expect more more business deals you know the president did say that there are over 200 businesses from China that are operating in South Africa and that is something that he can be proud of but he I think the biggest factor that we all need to face is that there isn't much representation of business South Africa in China and that, were, that is what the president wanted to emphasize to the Chinese Republic. Thank you so much, uh, Zweli Banzi Masivoko. We hope that uh, we will de we'll definitely delve deep into some of these issues once the program 
uh, continues. I mean, uh, gets underway, if I may put it that way. But much appreciated for that. That is uh, Zoli Bansi Masiboko, uh, Soweto TV news reporter, who's been on the ground uh, just, uh, you know, unpacking uh, the developments within uh, the uh, BRICS summit. We saw what's been happening, particularly on these issues uh, that uh, he did touch on, uh, particularly on uh, the issues of uh, the agreements between South Africa and China, and making a very bold statement that uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa saying that um, there's not uh, much businesses in uh, China that are belonging to South Africans, and they're looking to change that in the long run. But, uh, you know, uh, before we can uh, continue, uh, Zoli Bansi Vazibuko compiled a report for us during the visit of the Chinese President Xi Jinping in the, at the Union buildings earlier today. Let's take a look. Cyril Ramaphosa received the Chinese President Xi Jinping on his fourth state visit to the country earlier on today. The upcoming state visit is said to be an opportunity to analyze progress in the areas of cooperation between the two countries and identify solutions which will deepen collaborations for more impact in the important sectors. The president says China and South Africa have long shared a common understanding that trade and investment are the foremost catalysts for improving the living standards of their respective people as partners in development. Bilateral trade with China has grown exponentially from less than 1 billion in 1998 to more than 614 billion in 2022. The state says it hopes to use this visit to discuss how to narrow the significant trade deficit that exists in China's favor, mainly through facilitating greater entry of value-added South African goods, products and services into the Chinese market. Another area of interest identified by the president is tourism promotion. He said it was also a potential area of cooperation. He also added that the government will actively promote South Africa as a tourist destination for Chinese tourism at the China International Import Expo, the China Africa Economic and Trade Expo and others. The president says it was encouraging that direct flights between South Africa and China are increasing. The president of China is also expected to participate in the 15th BRICS summit in Johannesburg, which commences today. For Soweto TV News, I am Zweli Banzi Mazibubo. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Malukwani. We've reached the last segment of the show and uh, we will be talking to the Small Business Development Minister, Selen Dabeni Abrams, just to get a sense of uh, the impact of BRICS uh, uh, Summit to uh, small businesses there. But before we can continue with that uh, interview, let's uh, listen to what uh, economist Stephen Mantu had to say about the impact of the BRICS summit on the South African economy and the African economy uh, as a whole. This is what he had to say. So we're continuing of uh, focus on BRICS and its development. It is important that we must highlight factors which uh, are contributing and are very important to South Africa and the African continent. If you check South Africa from BRICS will benefit from what we call the foreign direct investment in important sector of uh, developing and growing the economy. The first one will be to look into key areas such as mining, which South Africa and the country uh, and the African continent do benefit from its mining. But again, looking into the automotive industry, your transportation industry, the clean energy and financial services or IT. Uh, which are very much important for the growth of Africa and its uh, resources. But looking into strictly the financial uh, services, South Africa benefit a lot because we are moving uh, uh, towards the new World Bank system, which uh, South Africa is a member of the new World Bank, which is bringing new system into financial sectors. And that will boost South African finances in future and will, will boost the relationship in terms of finances between uh, the five countries of uh, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. But again, looking into what is happening, the, the manufacturing hub of the world still remains China. And uh, the, the relationship or the direct investment or even trade between this country will have a big impact uh, or uh, BRICS will have a big impact on this type of relationship which we are talking about. 
into Africa, now it's important that African countries are able to make their own decision on when and how to invest or where to invest. So this help uh, South Africa, this help the African continent to be able to make its own decision in terms of whether do they want to invest or do they not want to invest in a specific market in the economy. So that is a, an impact uh, or what can be created by this uh, uh, breaks. But again, when we're looking into investment and project, which lead to creating significant job, that remain very much important. And again, where you have trade and mutual investment, that becomes a, a plus into this. So the BRICS, it's good because if you look into Africa, where raw material are produced, transported into Chinese, transported into where manufacturing can be created. But again, the Chinese and uh, your, your other markets have seen a, sig a significant role of cutting into transport costs. So they are investing into manufacturing hubs into the continent of Africa. And that will help into creating jobs. So it's some of the things which we need to look into when we are looking into how can this uh, uh, BRICS summit or BRICS as a standing uh, 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 or BRICS as, a, as, as an association or an organization create uh, into Africa and into the world. You are watching the special coverage of Soweto today. We're coming to you from the Santon Convention Center, the side of the media. Uh, we are here with uh, the Minister of uh, Small Business Development, that's uh, uh, Stella Ndabeni Abrams. So we're just going to talk more of, uh, you know, the summit, particularly looking at uh, small businesses, as we know that uh, the 15th BRICS Summit is being, uh, you know, hosted by South Africa for the first time since the COVID-19 pandemic. She's joining us now. Minister, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us on Soweto today. Thank you so much for having us and good afternoon to all the viewers of Soweto TV. Much appreciated. I, I, I want us to start about uh, the impact of uh, the BRICS summit, particularly looking at business as a whole. I mean, small businesses, uh, you know, are still reeling from the COVID-19 pandemic and now they're here at least, you know, to have that sort of a light that they need. Well, it's a great opportunity for the small business sector. It's a great opportunity because first, these are tourists in our country. They spend money when they come here. When you get inside Galaga, there's lots of small businesses that are exhibiting, more than 200. Again, that's an opportunity not only for showcasing their products, but to network with all the participants of this conference that we are attending. But at the end of it is to say, how do we take a Soweten product that is developed and produced in Soweto and make sure that we take it to Russia. And this is what we are about to say. How do we utilize the BRICS platform in order to create more market access for the small businesses in our country? We've had a session earlier on with a group of panelists that were explaining, including looking at the red tapes that make some of our small businesses not to be able to tap into the bigger markets. At the end of it, is the capacity to produce on demand because these countries are looking at big markets. Now, as small businesses, they struggle to produce the demands that are required, which is why, as the portfolio we said, it's high time that we encourage small businesses to get into the aggregator model, wherein they can be grouped together and be able to supply narchis, if it is narchi that is required by a particular country, but at scale. The fact that the client requires 50,000 bags of potatoes and you as Stella Trading can produce 500, it doesn't mean you must miss out on opportunity. But it is to look around in the ecosystem and look at who else is doing this and join hands together. And this is where we come in as the Department of Small Business Development, including the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition, to say how do we then assist them with the business development support that talks to exporting opportunities and how to survive and remain relevant. Relevant in that space. Just lastly, before I let you go, I know that uh, you know there's quite a lot of young people that are interested um, in uh, you know the BRICS summit, especially this 15th edition. The issue of digitalization very important. Um, how important is it to rally young people to this uh, sort of a setting? It is important that we rally young people into the digital platform, not for them only as consumers 
but for them also to be tech savvy in terms of driving the actual products that must be produced. And we've had engagements in case it and a, a BRICS summit was, was held within, within the BRICS countries with young people who clearly voiced out what challenges they are going through. As they are tech savvy, they don't need to transport everything and take it to Kenya without a contract. Mm -hmm. But they are aware that they can trade commercially in terms of the e-commerce platform. And that's one of the considerations that we are making to say how do we build a platform that should be able to bring in these young people in the different countries to be able to engage and share knowledge-based experiences whilst they're looking at opportunities. At the end of it are the policies that we develop as the countries that are at BRICS because it should be policies that are able to have an appreciation of what we have and therefore we learn from what, for example, China does well to say how do we go on for the, dra for the dragon's heart where in most businesses are grouped together and be able to provide the service that they can. Minister, thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you so much for having us. Much appreciated. That's uh, the Minister of Small Business Development, uh, Stelanda Benny Abrams, just talking to us about uh, the importance of getting young people into the BRICS summit. I mean, uh, she did touch on the issue of, uh, you know, taking that small, um, uh, you know, product uh, coming from Soweto and making it an international brand. Uh, that's what, uh, you know, the message that's uh, being uh, spread across here in uh, the 15th uh, BRICS summit here at the Santin Convention Center. We will be uh, giving you blow by blow coverage of the things that are happening right here at uh, the Santin Convention Center in Santin. Well, that's how we wrap it up for our special coverage of day one of the 15th BRICS Summit here at the Santin Convention Center. Uh, you heard all the speakers, uh, you know, that we got in touch uh, to speak to um, uh, the Minister of Small Business Development there, um, Selinda Beni Abrams, uh, Stephen Mann, to also just commenting on that and also just general public, uh, you know, talking about uh, their expectations and also what is it that they would want the president uh, to discuss here at the 15th uh, break summit remember you can get in touch with us if you want to join in uh, the discussion just send us an email it's uh, soweto today at soweto tv.co.za or you can simply just send us um, a, a whatsapp or just give us a call at 081-531-8858 Five, seven. Right, so for myself and the rest of the team right here at the Sentin Convention Center, we'll see you tomorrow. Ibe Barok. <laughs>